Welcome back to the Charged Up Show. This is our second live interview with Eli Paul Freeman from the Air Centennials. This episode is brought to you by Holistic Hockey. Holistic Hockey offers high-end on-ice skill development. They offer the whole package with skating, stick handling, and shooting. If you're looking to gain an edge this summer, call or text Tyler Ertl at 519-501-2971 or send Holistic Hockey an email. Also, make sure to check out their Instagram at Holistic Hockey. Hope you enjoy this interview. Please welcome our second live interview here with Eli, Paul Freeman, Air Centennial Sport, and Peterborough Priest Prospect. How are you? So, just get into it, right? No, no speed around or anything. Just how's the offseason going? What's, what are the challenges for you? How have you dealt with it? Uh, the off season was a bit of a challenge at the start, you know, with the gyms closing, no ice available. Like it was tough just kind of like stay in shape, do like do my thing, like be ready for next season. But once like the Zoom workouts came out and the gym was back open, the ice was back, like I just found like getting enough sleep, eating right, and just working out and getting on the ice is basically my uh, whole day during the week. So what's <laughs> what's the balance been like mentally? And obviously. You can't all you can't just work out twenty four seven and yeah. I've dealt with the same. We haven't really talked about it much, but you need to keep a good balance and especially when we're in um we're in April when the season gets cancelled and you know the season isn't starting until there's no spring camps. You know you're training for September, October, November. Mm-hmm. How is that like for you mentally? Um honestly just knowing that uh, I gotta be in the best shape possible going to Pete's camp and then going to air trying to move up in the lineup there. So uh just knowing that I had to be like at my best was the only thing like motivating me like to absolutely like give it my all in the gym and on the ice. So that's uh, that's kind of what pushed me there. So talking about air, what are what are you most looking forward to in this inaugural season? And you know there was a meeting last week that I missed, but what are you most looking forward to and in moving into this? And the only thing is it does suck because there's thirty percent capacity. And yeah. You know, where, you would, you would think in air you're going to pack the home open, yeah. but that's not going to happen. So what are you looking forward to? Uh, I was really looking forward to the fans. Like you said, uh, 30% capacity is uh, it kind of sucks. But, uh, you know, playing in front of my friends, I go to school with uh, a lot of people from air. So I haven't really got a chance to play junior hockey in front of my friends a long time. So that's probably going to be what I'm most yeah. excited to do. For sure. So now we'll jump back. Now we went over <clears throat> Back to minor hockey. Um, walk us through your minor hockey experience. We know... I feel like I keep saying this and I keep going through this group, but you're in that group with McFarlane and Walker, probably our two highest up guests so far, two most known guests, and Serpa is, was the first live interview, and you played with them your whole life, pretty much, right? Yeah. So, so walk us through that. I came over to Cambridge, uh, Minor Band was my first year, uh, and honestly, the closest group of guys I've ever played with. Uh, I'm still really good buddies with these guys today. Uh, it was awesome playing minor hockey with them. We had a really tight-knit group. I uh, won a ton of championships and uh, I'd, like had a really, really good team, minor midget. Uh, a lot of us got drafted, so the end goal was there and uh, it was really, really fun to play with those guys. What's it like now seeing so many of those guys in Junior C, B, and OHL? There's so many everywhere. Um, oh, it's unbelievable. Everyone's uh, taking a different route. We got guys playing prep in the States, guys playing Junior B, Junior C, OHL, uh, guys all over the place. So it's cool seeing where everyone ended up. Uh, but it's just awesome that we all come together this summer. We still hang out. We still go to the gym together. Like, it's, it's really cool. So now, what was it like going under Scott Walker? And we talked about him so much. Finally, had him <laughs> on as Serpa. Before we get into the stories, just what what did he teach you? Uh, honestly, he the most important thing he taught me was just play the right way, do the little things right. Uh, I don't. If it wasn't for Scott, I don't think I'd be half the player I am today. Uh, he's the by far the best coach I've played for. And I have nothing but good things to say about him. He's an unbelievable coach. Now I guess with a story. Oh. Uh, Scott's story. Oh, I got one. We go he's, in, he's had lots of time to think about this. We go into Sarnia, and Sarnia is always the bottom of the standings, uh, bottom of the standings team. And we come in, there's an intermission. It was, uh, I think, minor Ben, we get an intermission between the second and the third. So we're down, I think, 2-1 going into the third against Sarnia, which is terrible because they're not a very good team. And uh, usually a coach would come in and give you a big speech. Uh, he came in and said, take a nice long look at this arena. It's the last time any of you will see an OHL arena. And we ended up going out and winning 4 two. So you knew what he was doing. He got the best out of his players. But yeah, that was probably 
pretty, it's pretty funny story. story. Yeah. It's starting as an OHL arena. <laughs> yeah. They play out of the OHL arena, so that's, that's quite funny. So now, run us through, we're kind of breezing through it, but that's that's totally fine. You run us through your draft experience, obviously you had, you're with those guys, you didn't know where everyone else was going, but obviously you worried about yourself, everyone is, and maybe you went a bit later than you thought, what, 12th, 10th? 12th round. 12th round, maybe you wanted to go a little bit earlier. And What was it like seeing everyone else go and then you seeing yourself go? Well, going to the draft, uh, I was just hoping to get drafted like anywhere. Just being picked anywhere would have been uh, awesome. and. Uh, you know, get a couple calls before the draft, you kind of have some hope, like you don't really know where you're going to go. And then uh, you see the boys go uh, all the rounds before you. I think it was five guys, uh, four guys who went before me. And then you watch the draft from nine in the morning to all day, just sitting there watching the computer. And then eventually to see your name go is really, really cool. Uh, you start getting calls from your agent, the team, all your friends. Like it was super cool. Just that whole experience of the draft was awesome. For sure. And what were, yeah, what was that day like? You said you're watching it. All, yeah, all day. In the long, first... It's a long day. Uh, I sat there. I got right up at nine in the morning, watched the first pick, and I think I didn't get drafted until after three thirty. So it's a long day looking at the computer for sure, but definitely worth it. So then jumping into your first camp, obviously there isn't too much weight to get draft <coughs> in the first camp. And no, I think what, it was two weeks. What was your first experience at rookie camp and main camp? What was your first taste of the OHL like? Rookie camp was pretty cool because they kind of bring you in. They show you how the organization. Uh, works and like you're treated like you're already on the team at rookie camp which is unbelievable um you get a taste they they cook for you they give you the whole experience for uh, the weekend there you do fitness testing and then uh coming back in august for main camp was uh, a totally different story i come in I'm, I'm sitting beside nick robertson uh my first camp and the speed just unbelievable like it's to another level from minor midget to ohl is just unbelievable speed jump like i noticed it right away um as soon as I stepped into that first 16 year old camp, I knew I wasn't fast enough to uh, play there yet. So that's the kind of thing I had to get faster, stronger, all that stuff. Yeah, it's crazy how some of those guys jump in. Yeah. It's from minor major. They barely play junior. Yeah. Okay. Most people need the year of junior B at least. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Guys like Serpa McFarland, guys that could go up and play games, like, good for them because it is really fast. Yeah, for sure. So now I'm getting into the tough your <clears throat> little state in Pelham. And Run us through this camp that I just found out about yesterday. Run us through the crazy camp. So as a 16 year old, you're looking to sign junior B anywhere. It's, if you can get a junior B card as a 16 year old, it's, it's good. So I signed a card in Pelham, which is in the Golden Horseshoe Loop over in Niagara. And uh, I figured junior B is junior B. So uh, we have a main camp, it's two weeks long. It starts with two hours of off ice. After the off ice, you get half an hour to go get ready for an hour and a half on ice for two weeks straight until the season. Then you have a day break, and then we went up to Cochrane for uh, three or four days for a little exhibition tournament. That sucks. That yeah, sucks. it was unbelievable. It was, like, it was a grind. Now, what was your experience like first? It's, Villa, you can have whatever Villa's was, well, good or bad, but yeah. what was your first experience like? Taste How hard was it living away from home and going through four hours a day of work every day? That was definitely tough. Uh, I kind of... I was kind of used to switching schools because uh, the year before I moved to Cambridge and went to Southwood not knowing anyone except uh, McMullen. So I went there kind of like made new friends. So I was kind of used to the new school thing, but moving away from home was kind of tough. Uh, first few nights was kind of weird. Like I didn't really like sleep a whole lot, but uh, living away from home wasn't bad the longer I was there. But yeah, it was, it was tough at the start for sure. And then what was it like, obviously, don't know what happened, but it's yeah. a bit of a harsh re reality being in junior hockey. And some a lot of people don't realize. I think you're signing on a team and you're set for the season. Yeah. Right? So what was what was your experience and how did it help you grow from maybe them saying it's better for you to go play major midget or when you chose to leave whatever yeah. it is. What was, how did that help you? Um, basically, yeah, I wasn't getting a ton of ice up there. Uh, I, I wasn't developing at all. Getting you know maybe yeah. three four minutes a game on the fourth line, which. I mean, I wasn't even playing like a role at that point. I was just kind of like being put out whenever. So it definitely helped me to go down, get more minutes, like develop a little bit, work on my game, uh, opposed to playing three or four minutes a night. But uh, yeah, I think going down helped me. Going down to bit, this was unbelievable. Uh, playing massive minutes and playing a more expanded role was awesome there. And I think it helped me develop to step into junior B full time next year. And that goes, that was my next question, is going to the Victor sets where I first met you. And yeah. What was, how, how much did you think that helped you and how good was the prep team? 
I think breakfast was awesome for me, getting on the ice every morning, working out every day. I think it like kept me in the routine. And the best thing with the gap between the end of the season and the start of the like summer training, I think yeah. that gap was amazing for me just to keep me in shape and stuff like that. And uh, the prep team, we were unbelievable. It was awesome going to school with guys and then playing hockey with them. I never really had that experience before. So, uh, you know, playing on the prep team, going, going to tournaments, rooming with uh, all your buddies, uh, winning tournaments, like it was awesome playing for the prep team. We didn't have the end result. We lost in a shootout in the finals, but it was super fun to play for the prep team. I think everyone from that team went on to junior CUB. Yeah, I think everyone's playing junior this year from their team. Yeah, that's crazy. So then obviously you said that helped you make the jump to junior B. So yeah. What was your well, what was it like first deciding you want to go to Kitchener? Did they did the Pelham have to trade your rights, or was that you could sign wherever you wanted? And what was the decision? So when I came down from Pelham last year, my rights were switched over to the Dutchman because I AP a couple games okay. in the playoffs, and then I really loved like the guys who were coming back on the team, and I really really liked the coaching in Kitchener. Like that's kind of the main reason I went there, and. Uh, you know, after playing a couple games in the playoffs there, so I played up and then uh, I talked to the GM, Jeff Grimwood, and he said there was a spot for me next year and it was just a no-brainer. That's where I kind of wanted to go. And I signed there early and I just kind of gave it my all to try and move up in the lineup there. So what was the season like as a whole there and ups and downs, but like you guys had a tough start, but you ended up being one of the best teams in the league. And what was that like for you? Yeah, we definitely stumbled out of the gates. I think we went 0-2 at the showcase to uh, teams that we should have beat, but uh, you know, Every time we were either in a slide or we were not winning games, you know, Bigsy knew exactly what to do and our leadership knew exactly what to do and we'd come back stronger and, I mean, the season there was unbelievable. I met a ton of guys like Braden Bowman, that guy's honestly one of my best friends and I met him, really came close to him this year. Uh, it was just awesome playing there with all the guys and we won a ton of games this year and it was awesome. Yeah, so that was that was our next question, I was saying that. We like to ask about the previous guests and that we've had yep. Sean Kowalik and Braden Bowman. Uh, Sean's captaining here for us next year and Bonesy's moving on to the OHL. Yeah. What was it like, those previous guests, and what was it like playing with them? Uh, playing with those guys is unbelievable. I mean, being a role guy, you don't get many shifts with Sean Kowalik on the ice and Braden Bowman, but uh, watching them play this year was awesome. Sean's a great player. Bonesy's another great player. Uh, great room guys. Both of them just awesome guys. Uh, yeah, nothing but good things to say about those Talk guys. about Kowalik and how good of a leader he is. And my experience, I never even met him. Well, I talked to him on Zoom through the interview or whatever. And yet he's already got the team chats going. He's got everything handled, it seems like. And he never even met in person for me. Yeah, I mean, he's got the group chat going. He's already he's texting uh, all the returning guys, letting us know what's happening this year. Like, he's really got it under control there. He, last year, he was an unbelievable captain. Uh, you know, whenever we were down, he stepped up, got the boys going again, you know, speeches to make sure the boys were on the right track. Like, he's a really, really good captain. So keeping on topic of Kowalik, what's your opinion on that he paid someone to break your fly leg? Oh, I was a top block. I mean, I didn't really kill much penalties in games. So, uh, you know, jumping, uh, killing penalties in practice. And uh, Jeb Paulson's taking a shot from the points. I went to go block it. It went right off my stick and broke it pretty high up. So it was perfect height for little Shawnee. So you got to use the broken stick. So tell them the story on how it had been talked about previously. Uh, Sean was using sticks that were breaking like crazy. He's using old sticks. So uh, I guess Jeb, uh, he told Jeb, break my stick. So I put my stick out to block a shot. And Jeb put it and broke it pretty high up. So I guess Shawnee got to use it for a little bit after that with an extension in it. And then another, another story is that um, you've been known to get a lot of penalty minutes. Actually, before that, let's talk about where did that edge come from? Like, you're not the most fun guy to play against. You may take some dumb penalties sometimes, oh, yeah. but where did the edge come from? Uh, I think I always played for tough coaches. Going back to when I was young, young in Brantford, I played for a coach, Norm Zane. Uh, he was always hard-nosed. Uh, going to Scott Walker after that, we all know he was pretty hard-nosed. And then... Uh, Going to junior B with Greg Bignall, another hard-nosed guy. So uh, I was always playing for hard-nosed coaches, and I realized like if I want to get ice, I got to play my role. So Scott kind of really taught me that like don't be a skill guy if you're not a skill guy, play your role. So I kind of just like once hitting came in, I kind of enjoyed hitting. So I kind of just adapted to that role and kind of took that role to my best ability of being a pest and trying to draw penalties and throwing hits and just being a physical guy. And then walk us through your humiliation after your first fight. Oh, all right, so as you guys know, the coach has cages, so it's a 
pretty tough to fight. Like you can ask all game and it, it's tough to fight in the gulch because there's cages. But uh, I was always asking guys to go all season and it's always tough to get in one. So uh, eventually I hit a guy on Brampton and he jumped me, threw the gloves off. So I threw him off and I fought him. That was my first fight of the season, pretty late in the season. And uh, after the game, we ended up winning the game, I think 6-2. After the uh, after the game, Bigsy came in the room, and uh, the only thing he said was, "It's about time you're finally not a pretender." So it was pretty <laughs> cool. Up the room. Yeah, it was pretty cool. All the boys get all fired up. So it was pretty cool there. But uh, yeah, that was awesome. That's pretty funny. So as we're slowly wrapping up, and what was the news like um, that the team was going to air, and was that? So I'm assuming you guys weren't expecting that, and. What was when did you find out? What was your initial reaction? Obviously, the first thing I thought of you're the one. You obviously know a bunch of people from mm-hmm. Southwood Air, same as me, and you know all the air kids. So you must have been super excited. But what was your initial reactions? Uh, it was kind of like going through the grapevine all year. Like the guys were kind of talking about it. Like there was rumors all through the year. Like you hear stuff. But um, I was excited. You know, playing and catching a great organization, great management, everything else. But you don't put fans in the building. There's not a ton of fans there. Uh, playoffs wasn't bad, but you usually don't get a lot of fans. So I thought it'd be pretty cool, you know, play a little closer to home, have uh, you know, have the building full before it was supposed to be 30% yeah. capacity, uh, stuff like that. Like there's just so many uh, so many pros of playing in air opposed to Kitchener. So uh, I was just super excited. Yeah, so last question is, we kind of covered everything. What are you looking to do going into your Pete's camp? What are your goals? What are the same goals going into the air season? If you, if you don't make the Pete or Pete's obviously, but what are you looking to do personally at both camps regardless? I feel like last year at Pete's camp, I had a really, really good camp and I proved myself that I could step into the league this year for sure. Uh, so this year I'm going there to earn a full-time spot like every other guy going to camp. Uh, I'm going to prove that I can play there full-time, you know, throw the body around, play my physical hockey and you know, show them that I can play there. And then uh, go into air camp if stuff falls through with Peterborough, uh, you know, just go in there trying to move up in the line. I'm trying to play a little bit more of an expanded role, maybe jump on uh, PK special teams, uh, stuff like that. Maybe get into a little bit more situations late in the game, a little yeah. bit more minutes, stuff like that. For sure. And thank you so much. We're all rooting for you now. We're Thank all you. rooting for your camp. Thanks for coming on.